Hello, I'm Katrina from Unity of New Orleans. Welcome to our Sunday Satsang. We will begin with our invocation, written by Charles Fillmore. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today we're going to talk about the metaphysical Ten Commandments, which are found in the Exodus story of the Hebrew Scriptures. So while many of you are very familiar with these concepts, I invite you to open your mind today and see them anew. We're going to look at these from a different perspective. So the Ten Commandments are the laws that were given to Moses by God, and they represent truth principles that are universal. There are variations of these morals in every ancient culture around the globe. For Muslims, the five pillars of Islam are central. For Hindus and yogis, the yamas and niyamas offer similar guidelines. Native Americans believe in staying close to great spirit, showing respect for all living creatures, giving assistance and kindness wherever needed, being truthful and honest at all times, doing what you know to be right, looking well after your body and mind, treating the earth and all that dwell upon it with respect, taking full responsibility for your actions, dedicating a share of your efforts to the greater good. And number 10 is working together for the benefit of all mankind. So beautiful. So these commandments are codes of behavior for an ethical, moral, and spiritual life. And again, while they may seem straightforward on the surface, their metaphysical meaning is profoundly deep. At Unity, we believe that the Bible can be perceived as the journey of the evolution of consciousness. And because Exodus appears immediately after Genesis, it's clear that these 10 laws were established very early, and thus they were intended to lay the foundation for a rich spiritual life. So today we're gonna to talk about these divine values. For context, when Moses received the Ten Commandments, he had just freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, and they were wandering in the wilderness. So metaphysically, the name Moses means to draw out or extract. Egypt in this story represents darkness or ignorance. The wilderness is our undisciplined thoughts. So when Moses went up Mount Sinai, which means ascending to the upper room or going up into your higher consciousness to speak with God and receive these sacred laws, we understand that their significance was to draw out the darkness and the undisciplined nature from the consciousness of humankind. So let's take a look at these 10 commandments. The first commandment says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. This primary commandment establishes that there is one power and one source, which is the creator of everything. 
The divine intelligence is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. And it doesn't matter what name you use, whether you say God or Great Spirit or Jehovah, Divine Mother, or Allah. God is the source of all that is, and that source is within you. We believe that this one power is not a being, but a state of beingness. I am that I am is the name that God revealed to Moses on the mountaintop. And the I am consciousness is your higher self. The I am is the power that we embody when we realize our inherent divinity. Understanding this concept liberates us from mental slavery, just as God freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. So this commandment reveals that we must remember our divinity when it reminds us the I am is the Lord your God. So the I am is how you access that divinity. And you shall have no other gods before me means that we are not to worship any other thing that may take us away from our divinity, such as material objects or money or an ego-driven life. Our spiritual path should come first. And thus, there must be no other gods before the divine one, which is within you and all around you. So God represents truth, love, goodness, compassion, kindness, mercy, unity, peace. And therefore, this first commandment also establishes the nature of the divine. And as we are made in the image and the likeness of the source, our creator, these are our inherent qualities as well. So if we want to be established in the truth of our being, then we strive to embody these characteristics. Charles Fillmore said, spiritual character building is from within outward. So we understand that we access the divine when we go within. And we're going to use an affirmation to bring that consciousness into our awareness. I embody the I am, my highest potential, which is love, light, truth, goodness, and peace. So just let that resonate in your being. And then let's move on to the second commandment, which says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image in the form of anything in the heaven above or on the earth below or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. So this second law means that God is not material and therefore we must not worship anything that comes in a material form or a carved image. God is the presence and the power, but not an object. When we put the physical dimension before the spiritual dimension, we can become attached to anything that we worship and we can lose sight of what is true and real, which is our spiritual nature within. So a carved image can be anything that comes from our ego, like any product of our mind or any desire. It can be the claim that our success comes from our own sources rather than from the abundant universal source. This may be experienced as an attachment to the small self rather than your higher self. Or it might be the denial of the one power and source. True unconditional love, which is synonymous with God, is experienced by those who submit their ego and will to the divine. So this second commandment serves to guide our perceptions and our actions in the understanding that all good flows through us from the source but not from our own accord. Our affirmation, I am a clear channel for the free flow of divine inspiration. And now the third commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God or do not take the name of the Lord in vain. 
To misuse the name of God is to not identify with the I am consciousness, which is your truth and your light. And it is an illusion to identify with your job or your title or money or any other image. When we only identify with our bodies and our egos and the physical dimension, then we can lose sight of who we truly are and forget about our inherent divinity. And that is how we misuse the name of God, which is the source within you. This third commandment also tells us that whatever name for God that we use, whether it's Great Spirit, Divine Mind, Buddha, that we speak that name with the utmost respect and reverence. And this really highlights the power of the spoken word, for words are powerful and they create energy. Everything that you speak will return to you. So we choose our words wisely and we know that what we hold in the light draws more light to us. Whereas what we hold in the darkness keeps us in the darkness. This is one reason why prayer is the highest form of communication because it is communion with the divine. And positive affirmations attract positive experiences. So let's speak an affirmation. I identify with my higher self. I choose my words wisely because they are powerful. Our fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Sabbath means to set apart as holy. The fourth commandment reveals the importance of our spiritual practices. So we must remember to regularly find holy union with the source within, with God, with divine mind. And that may be in meditation, in prayer, sacred music, yoga, or any other practice like communing in nature. The Sabbath is traditionally understood to be a day of rest. So we need to allow time for the body and mind to rest regenerate and rejuvenate. The body requires relaxation to stay healthy and balanced. The mind also needs to rest in meditation, in the silence, or in sacred music. Relief from the constant thoughts of stress and worry and fear and time to rest in union with the divine is an absolute necessity. We tend to be human beings spending too much time doing rather than just being. Remembering the Sabbath is also to make everything holy. So it's not reserved for only one day a week, but for every day. So let us be reminded to find union with God in all that we do. Keep a prayer in your heart. This unity of our human essence with our divine essence is the ultimate goal. So strive for that heavenly marriage between the material and the spiritual planes. Remember the kingdom of heaven is a state of consciousness that can be realized here on earth. Our affirmation, I remember the truth of my divine potential and seek to realize it through my physical form. The fifth commandment says, honor your father and your mother. And on the surface, it sounds like we are commanded to respect our parents and our family of origin. And indeed, it is important to honor your heritage. It is also crucial in the evolution of our souls to make peace with our histories and with our ancestors. I believe that we choose our parents and our families before we incarnate so that we can learn the specific lessons that our souls need for growth. So no matter the circumstance, strive for respect, forgiveness, and peace in your family. On a spiritual level, this law indicates that the divine has both masculine and feminine qualities, the father and the mother. Like the yin and the yang together, they complete the whole. 
There is an eternal dance of consciousness, which is the masculine element and energy, which is the feminine, that creates all of existence. Within each one of us are the same polarities, darkness and light, male and female, material and spiritual, intellectual and loving. The father, which is the masculine aspect, is the mind and the intellect, and the mother or the feminine is the heart. Now we can over identify with our egos and our intellects quite easily. So it's important to strive for balance and wholeness in order to evolve as spiritual beings, which is why we are reminded to bring your awareness to your heart center. And with your awareness in the heart, let us speak our affirmation. In union with the divine, I am balanced and whole. Our sixth commandment says you shall not murder. And it's quite obvious that we should not kill another being. But this teaching goes much deeper than that. It also speaks to all the ways in which we kill ourselves through our thoughts and our feelings, our anger and our fear. This commandment reflects the ways in which we abuse our bodies and kill the life force energy with food, work, stress, and other substances. When we stress and strain the body, we are literally abusing God because the body is the temple of the divine. Science and medicine reveals that stress is the number one major ager and the root of all disease. Mental stress slowly erodes the body of health and homeostasis. Guilt and shame turns into a cancerous killer that robs your body of life. And you know, we're taught to carry our baggage from the past as if it defined us. How often do you find yourself digging through the trash of your history to see if you left something important behind? Take out the trash, let it go. Carrying that burden gets far too heavy over time and it will slowly rob you of your joy and your peace. How we choose to relate to our past experiences determines our present state of being. So the sixth commandment reminds us to not kill our spirits with fear, sadness, and loss. Fear is the denial of the divine. So instead, turn on the light in your awareness and choose to have gratitude for all of the lessons you've learned. Our affirmation, I release all worry and fear. I reside in the light. The seventh commandment says, you shall not commit adultery. And to commit adultery is to cheat on your lover, which is to cheat God, metaphysically speaking. We do this by not honoring the divine and by denying the I am consciousness, our Buddha or Christ nature. Adultery really is the perversion of truth. It's also the use of the word for what is false or evil. It is the distortion of the sacred union of the physical and spiritual dimensions. Adultery is when we are seduced by material things that distract us from our spiritual gifts. And for many people, the body and the mind are all that is, and this is cheating God. The body and the mind are temporal. God is eternal. Your soul is time transcendent. So this is like having an affair with the material existence, believing that this life is the ultimate. And the truth is that this mortal plane is a brief moment in the journey of your soul. And the spiritual realm is everlasting. So let us affirm, I am the eternal soul who resides in my body temple.
The Eighth Commandment, you shall not steal. Stealing means to take anything that doesn't belong to you. That could be someone else's property, or it could also mean their dignity. It could be someone's rights or liberties or their privacy. We steal when we condemn or judge others. We steal when we violate or infringe on another's worth or freedom. We steal when we lie and deceive. We steal from ourselves when we don't make time for our spiritual practices and communion with the source within. Not stealing is a universal principle of truth. Here we can contemplate the law of attraction as guidance for our actions. What we reap, we sow. What we give, we get back. Our good comes from developing a consciousness of good. Everything begins in mind. Stealing then defies the laws of the universe. We cannot keep that which we do not have the consciousness to have. So let us be generous and compassionate, knowing that our rewards are in kind. Our affirmation, I honor and respect all life. I am truthful, honest, and kind. The ninth commandment, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, warns us about lying about our neighbors, which could be anybody. It also refers to speaking falsely or making false claims. It can be interpreted as confirming or believing in anything that is not true. False testimony is anything that's deceitful, dishonest, erroneous, fake, fictitious or distorted. So again, we return to the concept of the power of the spoken word. Words have power and we create our experiences with our words. What we speak manifests into our reality and our words reflect our inner world. So this ninth commandment is really another universal truth. We cannot believe one thing and communicate another because it defies this natural law. For in truth, we express who we truly are. So let us affirm, I am honest and truthful in all that I say because I know that truth always prevails. And our final commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or anything that belongs to your neighbor. To covet insinuates that there is a lack or something missing. It means to desire something that doesn't belong to us. To lust after anything is to distort the energy of love. And this is falsifying truth. We can admire, admire what others have and realize that all good comes from the source and our good is on its way. This law is also warning against the identification with the worldly physical plane as a source of fulfillment. Instead, we are guided to remember that true realization comes from union with the divine within. These material possessions are only temporary but what is real and eternal is the soul. All else withers away with time. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't enjoy what we have, what we earn, and what makes life more comfortable. We definitely believe that the universe is abundant and we are here to enjoy our divine inheritance. But this is a reminder to not relate to worldly possessions as the source of real fulfillment. Contentedness can only be known by the one who knows the truth. And in truth, we are divine beings. So you may look to those who have material success and admire their gains. And then remember to return to that prosperity consciousness, knowing that the universe is abundant and your treasures are on their way. Choose to live with a generous heart and know that you are being provided for in all ways. Let us affirm, I claim my divine inheritance. 
Taken in total, the Ten Commandments are foundational laws for living a rich spiritual life. They represent universal truths and laws and principles. They act as guideposts to keep us on our evolutionary paths. And the metaphysical interpretation of these laws offers such profound wisdom and reveals their deeper meaning. This brings greater awareness to our consciousness and helps us to realize our true identity and stay on our spiritual paths. And Charles Fillmore said, spiritual character lives in humankind. It is what God has engraved on our souls, ready for development through our spiritual efforts. I encourage you to take these truths to heart and to let them guide you in all your ways. And with that, let's go into our meditation. Gently close your eyes. Quiet your mind. Allow your body to relax. Bring yourself fully into this present moment within you. For you can only feel the presence when you are present. Take a deep breath in and let go as you exhale slowly. Feel totally loved and fully supported. Surrender all your concerns to a higher power a greater intelligence, knowing that you are far greater than all your concerns. Give yourself permission to surrender fully and let go. Now as you breathe in deeply, say internally to yourself, God is. And as you breathe out slowly, say, I am. Breathing in deeply, God is. Breathing out slowly, I am. And continue to breathe in, God is. Breathe out, I am. The I am is the great divine energy flowing in you. When you realize the truth of the I am, the veil is lifted and the inherent power within you shines forth. A vast well of supply springs up, bringing eternal life. This potential is within you. You are a complete expression of the allness of spirit. There is within you all the wisdom of the universe, all creativity, and all that humankind knows and will ever know. Wherever I am, God is. All of God. The whole of God. Present in all time and space. Be still and dwell for a moment in the realization. I am a spiritual being. 
I am God's child. Wherever I am, the all of God is present. Right here, right now. All the inspiration, all the guidance, just be still and know that I am one with infinite intelligence. This intelligence knows not just which way to go, but the allness of life. When you realize the allness of the source, you walk easily through all the ways and all your challenges. In this realization of being in the allness, there is no fear. We simply act when we are prompted to from within. When you know your oneness with the allness, you cannot make a mistake because you are in the guiding light. Deep within you, beyond the subconscious and superconscious mind, is the flow of divine inspiration that is just as natural as gravity, always present always there, a well of wisdom and guidance. Rest in the knowing of your relationship to this power, that the source you are connected to is intelligent. The right answer is the one that comes through you rather than to you. For God can do no more for you than can be done through you. And this is perfectly natural. So allow yourself to become one with the consciousness of divine mind. Release all fear, worry, and doubt. Wherever I am, God is. I am a complete expression of spirit. I am a spiritual being. I am God's child. I am one with the infinite intelligence. I am the guiding light. I am divine. From that place of deep knowing of the truth of who you are. With all of that gratitude in your heart, let us close with the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. Now say, I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is. And I am safe and secure. 
the Lord watches between me and thee while we are absent, one from the other, and helps us to know that we are one in spirit. And so it is. Blessed be. Namaste. Amen.